What's up guys, Mishrak here, and this is Final Fantasy Tactics 1.3. Time to take a trip in the Swiggy Woods, but first, a little setup explanation. In later videos, I will actually break this out so that you don't, you can skip it with links if you want to, but for this video it's included because it's short. I'm bringing this time uh, a marksman, a chemist with white magic, a wizard, and Rams as a knight with guts. The only spell that the, the wizard knows is explosion. It just didn't have enough JP for anything else. And uh, Cookie Girl knows protect and cure. So let's start the fight. This is the first all-monster encounter that you run into. It's not hard, but it's very dangerous. The bombs are particularly nasty. So, one very important trick to this fight is to stay spread out. Cast a little protect early on. Cookie Girl actually has a, a, a knife equipped, which gives her 7 speed, and really gives her an advantage in this fight. Everybody else. She's way faster than anything else. She comes in handy because she's a, kind of a healer. Delita and Algus both will be fantastic punching bags. They do some damage. That black goblin is he's the only unit that the monsters have that can revive, so he takes priority. Fortunately, Algus and, and Delita both go after it right away. They do smart make a smart decision and helps. Turn Punch is a really huge AoE for this stage in the game, so you have to be really careful with the goblins. And these bombs like to stay at range and apply that type of damage. Douse covers everybody. Well, it missed, fortunately. Would really amplify the damage on their ranged fire attacks. Move Roms over to kill this Black Goblin and get him out of the way for, for good. So now the enemy will have no reviving units. So everything that's dead will stay dead. The one thing I want to avoid with Captain Crunch here is moving him too far away from everybody else, too close to them. I don't want him out there by himself. A lot of damage on that counter throw. It was actually, the range was actually increased in 1.7. Checking the, the range on explosion here can really only hit the goblins with it. It would heal the bombs. And I'm taking some advice from ID Bot and not moving unnecessarily. It's a bad habit from, from playing vanilla. So it's better in this situation just to wait. Because if I move him in this, uh, if I move him too far away he will he'll be in danger. He'll be, he'll be in range of their, their attacks. So I'm just gonna wait here and let them come. That make sure that the next attacking unit won't be able to kill him while I'm casting that cure into the goblin so he won't. Again, taking the advice from ID Bot, it'll be a tough habit to break, I'm sure, but I'll do it. Stay put. Sometimes it's just better. 72% chance confusion missed. Got lucky there. Confused. Algus is already pretty confused, but I don't need any help from monsters to confuse him. You can see the danger from that AOE goblin attack. 
fortunately everybody guarded it pretty much, and the ones that took damage had protect on, so it wasn't a big deal. But you can see if you're all clustered up like that, they can apply a lot of damage potentially. As you can see Ramza hits pretty hard, 40 damage, it's a lot. Almost half, or more than half that goblin's health. Now I'm 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 not killing them with with the archer there because the only target that the wizard can damage are the goblins, and he'll get an opportunity to move before they. Move. So I'm choosing to target the bombs rather than the goblins, at least with the the marksmen, so that I can. So I'm not wasting damage. If that makes sense. So that that goblin's gonna act first before the other one, so I prioritize killing it. Check Alicus's health. Healing the wizard's a better choice here. Keep everybody spread out away from the bombs. Out of range of their ranged attacks. So they have to move closer to use it if they want to do that. Algus in his infinite wisdom again raises Delia rather than attacking. I guess the AI always prioritizes that, but seriously, good job, Algus. Anyway. Delita serving his purpose as a punching bag. One nice thing, I guess, about that is the goblin's closer. And now August is gone, so... He won't be doing any more dumb things, wasting my phoenix downs. So I'm going to move Roms over here and attack the bomb that's at full hit points. think about it for a minute, but I, real, I remember again that the wizard is the only one that can... Or the only thing the wizard can damage is the goblin, so I move Captain Crunch over to attack this bomb. Now, I'm not expecting this. I'm not expecting to get a double attack, but it does. And I got lucky that he didn't get a critical quick. Otherwise, he would have charged right in and blown himself up. Probably killed the chemist and the marksman. Stay put, Mishrak. Now this is probably the first mistake I make. Um, I should have moved her over to the side where the where the wizard is, but instead I move her a little bit close and throw a potion on Captain Crunch to heal him, which is okay, but. I realized after I did this that she was too close. She was way too close. And I didn't expect this to happen. Like, really, I did not expect that bomb to self destruct when he wasn't in critical. And then. Okay, I'm like, okay, I'll, go, I'll just finish him off. Battle's over, right? Wrong. He's floating. I can't attack him. So. I'm really confused at this point. I'm like, why can't I attack him? I, it took me it took me a while to realize that he was floating, and I should have caught that right away. But uh, I felt pretty stupid here. I almost lost this fight because of this. So I'm like, okay, well, I can throw a stone in, and it'll do 12 damage, right? Right? No, six damage. And again, no critical quick. I was very surprised at that. And rather than move him closer to try and revive somebody, I just, I just wait. I, I don't know what I was doing. I have no idea. So now, the bomb has the crystal. Two of my guys are dead. I, I felt really dumb that I made such a silly mistake. And it's a good wake-up call in this fight to realize that it's not over till it's over. Especially with these bombs. 
So I regained my composure a little bit after a, nearly a total disaster. Wife, the chemist, cookie girl. chance to get good synergy, good zodiac synergy. Don't want to move Doroth up there, because that would put all the units clustered together and self-destruct would kill everybody. So I'm going to keep the wizard at range. So at this point, I'm actually kind of hoping that the bomb will self-destruct, save me some time, but the extra JP is welcome. I'm trying to keep my levels low by not going too long, I'm not trying to farm here, but it ends up being okay. So now if, if the bomb self-destructs, the cook girl all the way over here probably won't be in the same range. Dorth back, keep them spread out. Contemplating reviving Algus. I guess in hindsight I could have done that and wrapped the fight up a little quicker. But with his with the gob with the bomb's turn next, I I decided just to lure him away. I could have moved Roms up here to throw stone, but it wouldn't. That's all he would have been able to do. It wouldn't have been enough damage. He still is at 42 health, so let's shoot him in range a little bit. Get the item. Get the item. There we go. Phoenix down. Yeah. And a crossbow proc speeds this up a lot. about being able to throw a phoenix down on, on the wizard there, but the tree's in the way, so just heal. Although it was really unnecessary. Checking the range on throw stone, make sure I can actually hit him if I move there. that fight up. Not my best play. A little bit sloppy there at the end, but a win's a win. Anyway, thanks for watching, guys. Catch you later.